Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today we are gonna take a look on how to brighten up your raw images in Affinity Photos Developer Persona. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I wanna thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. So here you can see a photo of my last model shooting that I did yesterday and I wanna do more tutorials including my own photos. When you guide your attention to the upper right side, there is a histogram and you might think, oh, that doesn't look good. There's a lot of clipping in there. What's happened there? Well, this is actually a little bit of a fault of Affinity Photo because when you open up your raw file, Affinity Photo already applies some adjustments to that. So what you want to do is to go to the basic tab down here and you have these circular arrows in the corner here. So you can see there's some settings in here you want to click on undo that so this actually sets it back and you want to do this also for all the other areas down here uh, except the profile that should be okay and now if you look at the histogram this actually looks okay there's nothing clipping in there um, maybe a tiny little bit let's have a look at what we want to do next and I would suggest that you go up here in the corner where it says show clipped tones this is important and if there is a bright gray background this means it's turned off if you click on it and it has a dark background this means it's turned on and this shows you your clipped tones now if I zoom into the picture a little bit you can see right here there is a little bit of clipping going on and that's quite okay because the reason is we have been in a very shadowy area and photographed against the bright sky a little bit so of course there is going to be a little bit of clipping where there is just this brightness from the sky coming through. All right, so don't worry about that. Now, how do we progress from here? I would suggest that you turn from histogram to scope because this gives you a lot more information of what you're doing. The scope works a little bit different. So in the lower parts, you have the dark areas. In the upper part, you have your bright areas. And actually you read the scope like your picture from left to right of the areas of the picture. And we can actually see the picture in the scope. If you pay attention to that, you will see that here we have some spikes and they are in the exact location where we have the white hair and the skull. So there is the first spike. Then we have the shoulder and the arm where it gets a little bit darker. So this goes down and then it goes up again where we have this white fabric on her so this is a brighter area so this is the second spike here so this really gives you good information of what is going on in the picture now the way I would progress from here is to start to adjust the exposure. So push that up because we want to have these spikes here go in the upper area because right now they sit in the middle. We want them to be up here, not hitting the ceiling, but be in the upper area. So let's push this up. And then if you let go, it updates the scope and you see, okay, now these spikes are up here. Also, we have raised the darker values up quite a bit. So that's a good starting point. Now we can work with our black point here to bring that in a little bit. And there you see our first clipping going on here in the shadows. Don't worry too much about that right now. This is what I call the dance of the clipping tones because you will move the levers around a little bit, the sliders to get it right. Okay, so let's move up the brightness a bit. That's okay. We get some more of the clipping down here. So we want to move our sliders around a little bit more. So we get rid of that. Let's move them back a little bit and let's leave it like that. There's a little bit more clipping here and we will address the other areas and then come back to our exposure setting. So let's go here to the enhance areas. And for this, we want to play around a little bit, for example, with the clarity because I want this to be a little bit softer. We have nice bokeh in the background. 
And then um, if I move this down with the clarity, it makes everything softer, more dreamy. So you can see if I move this completely down, it loses a lot of detail here and in the hair, but it makes the picture a lot more dreamy. So you can do that. I don't want to do it too much though. So let's just move it over here in that area. Then I want to push up the vibrance a bit so we have more color in our picture and maybe a little bit of saturation, not too much though, because saturation can be quite harsh as a setting. Vibrance is actually better to use to push up your colors a little bit. Good. So um, I want this to be a little bit warmer. So for the temperature, I'm going to pull this up a tiny bit and also the tint. I want to move this over a bit. So you go by taste now. You go by your feeling on what you want to have in these different settings. Um, so that looks actually quite good. Down here we have shadows and highlights. Um, really depends on the picture how good it looks. It might look really wrong or kind of good. Um, the highlights here work very good. The shadow sliders doesn't work really good with that picture. So let's move this up here a little bit for the highlights. Or actually, let's see, let's move this down a little bit actually, because we want to have still here a little bit more details in that area. And you can also see that this then removes our problem with the clipping tones. We can also play around with the shadows. You can see, oh, and this removes our clipping tones over here. And we are going into a pretty good direction right now. Um, let's see what else we can do here. Let's compare the before and the after. So this is our starting picture and this is where we are now. It's quite a lot brighter. It looks really nice. At this point, we are hitting a little bit the limitations of Affinity's Photo Developer Persona because you can't just quite get as in depth as in other programs and the rest you would do in the normal photo persona in Affinity Photo. There is now something more we can do, which is, for example, details where you can refine that. So you can see if I heighten that amount, you would get more details down here, but it also has an influence on the bokeh in the background. Um, so I don't want to do this for this picture. You technically can do local adjustments with the overlays over here in that tab overlays you have this brush here you can either use a brush or a gradient and with this I can paint on areas like the face for example and now I can do adjustments as you can see the details are grayed out so I can't use that the basic parts those are turned on and I could now for example make the face darker make the face brighter uh, play around with that now there is a downside to that and that is when you paint this in you don't really have much choice for the brush because the only thing you can set for the brush is the size the hardness and if it's edge aware or not and then afterwards if you make these settings you can also set the opacity of that area how much that should apply or not but that is not enough that is not refined enough to really, for example, address the shadows. As you can see here, there are shadows under the hand, there are shadows under the arm, there are shadows here on the belly. We would like to brighten up a little bit, but the problem is this brush just isn't exact enough. It doesn't really look good. So um, this is basically a starting adjustment and from here you would click on develop and the rest of the adjustments you do over in the photo persona let me know if you want to see that if you want to have a tutorial on how to do that for example get the picture more sunny brighten up the shadow areas all that cool stuff let me know in the comments see you soon and have a nice day bye